can't take it anymore. Where was it? You can tell by the scene, you can probably guess what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah, I lost the blower speed on the truck. And it's getting like really warm weather out here. And sometimes you just need all the air you can get. So what I'm doing is checking the blower motor resistor. And let me uh, get the camera someplace where we can see what's going on. And we'll walk through the steps. Because I want to make this as easy and painless as possible. Because, oh, well, that's the way I like to operate. Less work, the better. This is a 2002 Tahoe. Uh, this should apply to a wide range of the years. This particular series is between late 99, uh, early 2000 to 2002. That was a particular body style, but I believe the newer models and some of the older models share the same setup under here. Uh, just particular parts may be different. But uh, in uh, troubleshooting a blower speed problem with this, what I found with this, uh, this series, GM, whichever the case may be, there's a probably a good first place to start is right at the uh, blower resistor pack. Now to get to it, you're going to have a shroud. There's going to be three screws, and that's going to be seven millimeter. They're going to be these uh, drywall-looking jobbies, these plastic grabber screws. And you're going to have one uh, at the middle under the uh, center console area, if you have a console, but under the ashtray. And you'll have one in the middle of that and one in the front of here. I didn't find any other hidden ones, so three screws pulls this down. Then just look for the wire connections. Uh, I hate being on a noisy street, but this is the combination blower relay and, and resistor pack. Now why I like to start here is because just about everything you need to know is going to be at this connector. <coughs> I'll flash this up on the screen probably. Or you can, here, I'll let it sit there. You can pause on it and take a quick look. It's really nice having a diagram because I usually forget what color is what. But I'm basically going to decode the voltages off this connector, which is coming from the uh, blower control board, which is up on the dash with the switches. And I have a 7-pin connector here. And these are labeled A through uh, G. Yeah, that sounds about right. And they're out of order on the uh, diagram, so just look at the lettering. So I know my ground is on E. Well, that's easy enough. I look for A. A is tan. No problem, that's number one. So that corresponds to the letter uh, alphabet ascending. So easy enough. A, B, C, D, E. Big black one, that's your ground. Okay, that made it easy. And then we know how the rest of them are going to fall in. So you're going to have your, uh, let's see, low, medium, medium two, medium three, and high. In my particular instance, my high is out. I'm no longer high. That's probably why I can't see it. God damn it, get off my street, you sons of bitches. This is a, this is a residential street, and I've got commercial truck traffic all up and down it because of a bunch of jackasses. I want to move to the country. I want my neighbors to be miles away. So anyway, by looking at this connector will tell you pretty much what's going on. The, uh, the power speeds. Fucking noise! I might as well live on the freeway. I'm not even going to talk. This is going to be a voiceover. Fuck me. Alright, let's look at my schematic here. This is the wiring diagram for my 2002 Chevy Tahoe. Uh, this pertains to just the blower motor. So it's, it's nice and neat. We're going to have a couple of fuses up here. We have the switch in blue. We have the uh, resistor assembly in green. Down here is the blower motor. And uh, the blower motor takes all its power through the blower motor resistor assembly. So don't be looking for any extra wires or grounds. The blower motor has two wires, 
which uh, go to a plug which comes off of the resistor assembly itself and on the resistor assembly are four resistors four thermal fuses and a relay and we're going to get to those real shortly over here is a representation of the uh, the harness that I'm playing with underneath the ductwork since my head was in the way it's probably easier for you to see what I was doing here ground is provided on pin E the very same ground that the blower motor takes so that's a perfect place to take your voltages from and uh, these little circles here uh, represent lights or a test meter this is going to be very similar to prior years and uh, subsequent years with minor modifications in uh, in my era of truck which is 2002 the they found some of the components or actually most of the components were underpowered for the current needed by the blower motor as a blower motor ages uh, they tend to pull more current and usually it's because of the grease the motor loses lubrication or the lubrication that's in it uh, finally starts drying out and becomes gummy and it takes a lot more current to overcome that ickiness or weasel snot uh, to get uh, up to speed there so that starts pulling more power which means uh, more electrons which means more heat and it starts overcoming the weak points like the switch contacts and uh, the wiring harness itself which uses some small pins so let's uh, let's look at the first one here this is the under the fuse hood in my case it's a 30 amp they increased it in later years so you have to consult uh, your own uh, booklets or whatever to find out which fuse it is but this is a battery connection hot at all times and that is on pin G in my truck it's a fat orange wire uh, later years they decided to make it a fat red wire which makes a lot more sense but uh, in my case it's an orange one I should have power on this leg at all times so that's what I look for if I got power at pin G I know my under the hood fuse and this uh, wire is good I can ignore I don't even have to go under the hood I'm groovy if I don't have power at, at G I'm gonna be checking that fuse or checking my ground but now I have power at G my ground and my under hood fuse is verified I can ignore it now moving along let's turn the key on turn the key on I now have power at this other fuse which comes off the ignition switch and right now the power is stopped at to the switch because I haven't decided where to send it yet and since my problem happens to be the high speed that's where I'm going to send it right now so turning on high speed that should send power down to pin F of the harness pin F bypasses all of these resistors and fuses and goes directly to the blower motor relay which is part of the resistor assembly it cannot be serviced or replaced by itself sorry kids so since I don't have high speed there I check my voltage and I do not have voltage on pin F over here so I know where I'm going to start looking I'm going to be looking at the uh, blower motor selector switch right here but let's go through the rest of the speed so uh, you can grab this information for yourself uh, the blue just popped up to show that this is the ground network and it's provided through uh, the pin E and not any place else going to the uh, next lowest speed which is uh, M3 I'm going through one of the resistors and one thermal fuse I now have power on pin C or at least that's where you should have power and uh, that'll give you the next highest speed since you only have the one resistor in series with the electrons and on down the line M2 speed we now have two resistors in series uh, cutting the speed of the motor down even farther and that uh, should have voltage on pin D of the harness next speed down we're adding another resistor in line the motor is going even slower I'm now on pin A of the harness and that should be getting power representing the M1 speed and finally the low speed which is going through all of the resistors and fuses and we should have power on pin B now right here is a nifty little thing to know you see that the lowest speed has to go through all of the resistors and fuses if you're missing speeds on your blower and you have lowest speed well you can rule out the resistor pack because 
low speed relies on every resistor and fuse being intact so if you have low speed these resistors are good your trouble is going to be either in the switch or in the wire harness itself so that's a quick little check right there if you've got low your your resistor pack is good now that doesn't count the relay because remember that relay uh, is for the high speed only and uh, so if you're missing high we're gonna have the problem I have which is either the switch or this this relay could be bad but since I didn't have power at the F I know where I'm going now well, before we go let's make things even more confused while I was uh, checking this out online I came across some posts with people having an issue with the blower motor staying on all the time and having to pull the fuse underneath the hood now uh, typically what's happening there is the wiring harness uh, which I've already mentioned is kind of on the weak side uh, the high power orange will or your red uh, can overheat and short neck to the next connector which happens to be F and that is the one that powers the blower motor relay so that'll just be sending a uh, high speed fan all the time until you unplug the fuse and as a side consequence if your blower motor switch happens to be in the high position you could also back feed power through the ignition switch to whatever other circuits may be on that particular contact so uh, just something to be aware of so if your blower motor is stuck on all the time you either have a, a stuck relay at the blower motor uh, or a melted harness uh, over here on pins G and F so that's uh, where you look for your trouble areas and another note is if you have three pins being powered at the same time uh, automatically you have a bad uh, harness but if you don't see any melty bits it's going to be your switch because uh, G is always powered from the underhood and the rest of these uh, connectors excuse me the rest of these pins come directly from the blower switch so it's only supposed to be selecting one at a time so if you get uh, two or more and uh, you're powering two or more resistors at a time and you're gonna get some in-between speeds but that's just telling you right there that your switch is on the way out so go ahead and replace that okay I've put all the crap under the hood back together fuse panel and such I'm done there I know that my problem is not going to be in that direction so now I need to get into this so let's make some room here get rid of that I don't want to break that off so get rid of that turn that off turn the key off hush uh, if you don't have a parking brake you might want to get a block of wood and I know the parking just about any parking brake if you don't use it constantly the cables are going to seize up and uh, these GM trucks have particularly weak parking brakes because they're combining a small drum with discs and rather than lock the caliper down they decide to have a little drum and it's basically spring pressure only you can't put direct cable pressure on it so I'm just going to sit here and hold the brakes until I get to the point where I can put back and park so to get these dashes off it's not all that difficult it's just kind of a pain plug some stuff here okay tilt your wheel down your steering wheel so that's going to be in the way now you got to get the gear shift lever out of the way take that down holding the foot on the brake and wishing that damn noise would shut up just gently give a tug on this thing and the clips pop out and you can remove the whole dash panel. Boy, that's one thing that's a lot easier from the 70s, ain't it? 1500 little screws. There. Ah, oh, shut the hell of that up. Anyway, where was I before being dinged to death? Okay, you're going to have two screws holding in the climate control system here. And those look like to be probably the size I have to go back outside to get. No, they are seven millimeter. Okay. Most of the screws under here are. And then there's these little squeezy clips here. My frame. But above and below the screw, there's going to be... Because these assemblies actually snap in. The screws are just to keep them tight.
kind of hard to grab this other side with that pocket there. And I didn't bring any other tools but that wrench. Needle nose would be really nice. Make sure that's all the way out. Just disconnect the thing. <laughs> cool. I did not pay attention before. The blower switch is its own separate little switch. So you don't have to replace the whole electronic gizmo. That's good. I was kind of worried about that. So, we're going to do a little surgery on that bad boy. Because I don't replace anything until they absolutely have to. So let's uh, pull the knobby off of that. Again, 7 millimeter screws that you'll drop somewhere. And there's the switch. Well, before we get that far, let's take a look at the connectors. They look good. I don't see any sparking, arcing, or melting. And uh, the connections on the switch are actually nice and shiny, so I don't have a problem with electrical connections. I have a problem with the switch. And I do see something here. I don't know if that's epoxy, you know, like covering something up, but I see a little melty bit there. Right on top of that connector there. That probably isn't good. Now, let's go see what we see. Well, a quick Google search has left a bad taste in my mouth. As it appears, you cannot get this switch separately from here. All I know is this was made in 2104. <laughs> I'm, I might be able to dig something up, but eBay, uh, Google, Amazon, no. Auto parts stores, they all want to sell you the whole console package here. Which really is kind of a waste. And it's probably special order. So, I'm going to continue with the surgery and really hope I don't screw this up to the point where I don't have any blowing. In which case, I'll have to hook up a manual switch and that would just piss me off. Okay, let's hope these don't spring out like a Swiss watch. Nothing like interrupting the projects I'm working on to do something totally unrelated. All right, let's uh, let's grab a vice. Vices are good. So here's a little crispiness here I saw on the outside of the case, and that's got me concerned. But I won't know until I get on the inside. I know the switch is definitely. Bork, but is it borked beyond a little fixing and cleaning until I can order one or get around to that little bit? So, anyway, let's uh, gently pry on these little things here, get them started so I can get a hold of them with a pliers or something. Probably under some kind of spring pressure. All right, please don't go flying. This is just a common mode uh, commutator. Well, by the way, the bit that moves is all tied together because it's a single piece of metal, and you got these uh, connection pads that are uh, formed into it, and they just basically bridge certain parts of the switch to make whatever key functions work, which is what a switch does. But a lot of switches this complicated, we usually have three or four different ones, like these two will get bridged and those two will get bridged in one position and another position, three different parts might get bridged, but this is this is pretty simple, so these are going to be easy to clean up. But the issue I see right here is 
see that uh, that larger section right in the very middle that appears to be a nice common connection for the whole thing and right back there with the melty bits well that section heated up and this whole section here um, during over the spring pressure was pushed down into the casing so you can see that lip there so now it's out of reach of getting a contact so it should be a simple fix if I can loosen that up pad that up with some glue or epoxy clean up the connection and uh, I should be back in business this goes aside as not our culprit at the moment those contacts will just be cleaned up and polished this whole center pad which has a leg that dips down and there is probably my major issue for the speed but once I raise this whole pad up to level with the rest of them I should be good that's going to be kind of tricky getting it the same as the rest of them but hopefully a little trial and error will get me there before the glue sets because I don't use that long setting glue I, I get the stuff that works in five minutes so I need to prize that connection out clean it up build a new base in there and lay it back in now it'd been a lot simpler if they just sold this stupid part for ten bucks and everybody would have been happy everybody being me and that's really all that counts I guess I could just take a soldering iron and heat that up again in order to get it free of that plastic. And if I'd have taken a closer look at the uh, at the terminals, see there is a little bit of melty bits around that one there, where the uh, plastic oozed oozed through from the heat. Down there. And I gotta try to heat while pushing at the same time. I'm going to be heating on that pad <coughs> and trying to push it from the, the back side because I'm not getting any luck going from the front. Make sure this is nice and warm. Now you may be thinking to yourself, well geez, that's a hell of a lot to go through with uh, no guarantee of success. You know, just buy another switch. That's not the whole point of this channel. That's not any point of this channel. This channel is about tinkering and, and learning how and why things work. Because once you understand it, fixing anything becomes a breeze. Once you know how things work underneath. I mean, you can look at a switch like this and get some kind of mental x-ray vision to see what's under the hood, you know what's wrong. And you can see if it's something you want to dork with or not. But if you're if this thing cuts out somewhere in Nevada or Arizona and you're 200, 300 miles to the next uh, auto parts store only to get there after they close and you have to special order it anyway, well knowing something like this might come in handy. Now I know if I stepped on the switch now and totally borked it up that I could easily jumper it out and get me a high speed. And I learned that just by the tinkering involved. There we go. This is all about the tinkering. And there's our little troublemaker right there. A little bit on the warm side yet. And there's our troublemaking piece of plastic here. Okay, I'm just knocking off the ridges of where the plastic oozed because I don't want it interfering with the rest of the contacts. And I'm going to say it's favor, but the only thing it has going for it is it's three point contact. So with the spring pressure behind it, it should be sufficient to allow any 
of the points to maintain a good contact. If it was four poles, you'd have a problem. But three makes a stable base, so the spring pressure against the two will push this one over and vice versa. So that's really the only thing it has going for it. And it may be sufficient once I get this cleaned up. I don't want some contacts riding on the edge of the plastic and lifting it away from the, the copper. And you got this little plastic nub in here we don't want to lose. That is a, a guide that keeps this piece centered over the contacts. So we'll treat those as a separate piece here. Now, bend all these back in the plane. Probably a lot easier to clean it now while it's outside rather than getting a tool down there on the inside. It, it looks like all this grease here has just become nasty and that has what led to its early demise. I know this grease don't seem to be as good as it used to be either. So once the, once the cake grease gets in between the contacts, you get a poor connection that creates the heat which starts this process here and then it's just a escalating failure going on, reinforcing. A little acetone and try to get the snot off here. Unless you have a really, really fine point file or you're going to buff a contact, you're better off cleaning it and leaving it as it is because once you put a lot of scratches and gouges from a piece of sandpaper, uh, you just make things a lot worse that way because now you're riding the tips of those gouges and those are going to have to keep burning and burning until they lower to the point where these contacts touch another few of the, uh, the high ridges of those scratches and then uh, you just don't want to go there if you can avoid it. The smoother the better on a switch. Uh, scraping it with a screwdriver. If you scrape it right with the flat, you can get a, a flat surface, a planed surface, if you have a good tip on the screwdriver. So that's why uh, that trick can uh, can be pulled off if you know what you're doing. And it would be a lot, it's still better than using a piece of sandpaper or emery cloth. But you want to keep those contacts as smooth as possible. And that's the cut down on the arcing and uh, the high resistance points that will start those whole heat botch uh, up cycle here. And of course any heat you start getting for the bad contacts just cooks the grease even more. See that stuff isn't even coming off. So that needs a cleaning. And if you're going to use a file you do not use a cross cut file or a double cut, excuse me. A double cut file looks like a cross hatch pattern. That's like a double cut file. You've got uh, your main lines running across, but then you've got this like, see that second pattern going across? When you file with something like this, you're gonna get the gouges. If you want as flat uh, filing as possible, you need a single cut. And I don't know if I have any. That's small. I don't want to take off too much because then that, that reduces the current capacity of this chunk of metal here. Scratches are still there, but they're rounded scratches. And unless I really, I get more of an aggressive compound. And go at this for a while. And I'll give it one more, one more cooking. That's the little peg there that probably started it all. 
got the single connection for the high speed. Now the, the goofy part is that should not have happened. One, I don't run high speed a lot. And two, that's only supposed to energize a relay coil. That should be low power. And we'll dip that in the acetone to get the grease from the compound off of the connector. And I'll tell you what, this, this little jug of acetone gets a big workout. There's always some little thing that needs to be degreased or degummed. Well, there we go. That one should be ready to rock and roll. Now this is a thermoplastic that's uh, pretty chemical resistant, so that's just going right in the bucket. It'll probably dissolve instantly. Check your plastic first before putting it in acetone. You don't want to just pick out a bunch of loose copper bits now. Hell, even the sticker didn't come off. Okay, I'm going to change the buffing, buffing head out for a, a brass wire wheel, which is as soft as I'm going to have. I want to try to clean up some of the edges, some of those little hot spots I see in there. Oh, that works nice. I could just use this. looking real pretty. Remember, it's all about the tinkering. This is a piece from that uh, that uh, kit I thought was going to be a standard uh, deburring kit, but it turned out to be a die maker's burr set. And it's got a couple of neat little shapes in it, so I didn't send it back. And it's working out nicely for crap like this. When you need a, a better quality screwdriver to scrape things with. Alrighty, let's mix up a little snot. So the epoxy is just about set up, nice and hard. 
And there's a train. Fuck me. Okay, where was I? As the epoxy was setting up and it's in that uh, that mushy yet firm stage is a good time to make sure that uh, you're on plane there and it gives you a chance to tweak a little bit and hold it until the rest of it hardens up. You know, it's stuff like this that makes you believe in Satan or God or what have you because When, it hap when something like this happens so often, you can't put it down to random. It just... You know, I'm way, way over 50%. You know, and there's just no way that can happen by coincidence. Okay. So I'm pretty much on plane. It's kind of tricky to tell, but I'm using my finger to see if the... Uh, any particular contact is higher or lower than the other and I think I got them pretty well on an even keel there and uh, we're pretty much tightened up I got my blob on the back side to replace that burned out bit so now I'm thinking this switch is almost good to go uh, here's another little tip for you if all you have is a wire brush or sandpaper what have you to clean up a contact on a switch or a, or a wiring post or something uh, before applying power to it, work it. Work your switch, work whatever uh, physical connection a bunch of times to uh, uh, wear down the high spots created by the brush or the sandpaper because if you have juice going to it and you start sliding your contacts around, you're going to be burning off the very top so those crests that, uh, that, and the grooves that gets left in place on the metal. So it's better to have the power off and mush them down and, and burnish them into place and increase the contact area before putting the power to it. And even though I've buffed this one up, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to work this switch a bunch of times before I apply power just to wear it in, so to speak. Get that groove established, get the crest burnished in, and increase the contact area. And that will make the switch last a lot longer than if you just slapped it together and went to town on it. Does that make sense? I hope so. Okay, probably a little dab of grease would help. So, silicon grease or a, uh, a plastic safe grease. I don't want to, you know, put no molly or something in there. Okay, you got a notch here for orientation. So that's good. So we're just going to take a little bit of schmutz. Not much. Hopefully this is the type of grease that takes a long time to uh, gel and get nasty. Actually, I probably should have ran it down before putting the lube on. Yeah, just a light coat. Action feels good. Yeah, you definitely want to make sure you're at the hard stage before putting spring pressure on this. And I'm still feeling a little mushiness in that. This epoxy, I must not have got the proportions exactly right. So it's still taking a little bit longer to set up. Plus, it's really humid now. We just had a, a downpour like crazy. A hair dryer can speed that up. Fingers crossed, and when the rain stops, throw it back in the truck and see what happens. 
heat and salt and with raining cats and dogs and then raining mice. So now I'm just getting all this back together. I want to clean out that one iffy looking connector. So I'm using this uh, Deoxit D5, which I guess is supposed to be the best of the current crop of, uh, of electrical cleaners, but they, they long ago removed the, the chemicals that actually worked. So don't expect any miracles. I forgot the wrench, didn't I? Son of a bitch. I don't see it. I hate this thing. God damn it. You just sneeze in the direction lever right there where you don't need it. That stupid little blue thing. Right, you know, at your grip. So as soon as you move, it changes direction on you. Why? Because it's a jerk. Ding, ding, ding. Okay, that's really low, but it's low. That speed's good. Go higher. Here it comes. Yeah. If I wanted to wait, I'd have gotten a switch. In fact, I probably will order one just to have it. Well, that's right, I can't because they won't sell you that cocksucker by itself. If I'm so inclined later on, I'll get something. As far as I'm concerned, I'm done with it. Updated. Yeah, I guess I can take that in the house and screw that up. Just make it worse than it was before, like every other update. Alright.
that's it for this fix. Catch you on the next one.